This is Power Athlete Radio. With your host, Denny K, Professor Booty, and the Luke Summers. And now, toes forward, hips locked, shoulders set, and retract those scapulas. It's time for some knowledge bombs. Power Athlete Nation, it's that time again, episode 39. As always, I'm joined with my host, Steve Playtech, and we have John and Callie from Power Athlete HQ. What's going on, everybody? Howdy. What's happening? Howdy. What's up, Denny? Rocking and rolling. So, John, obviously, uh, you guys put out the um, podcast on Zach Evanes's strength <sighs> cast. Just got through listening to that. Very oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, how, how was it? I haven't had an opportunity to really go back and listen to it. It was pretty early in the morning, so I wasn't sure if I was rambling or how it necessarily went down, but I got to go back and at least listen to it so I can critique myself. So I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. You know, one thing that I've noticed that every other podcast I listen to you on, you always bring up something new, you know, some kind of new story, um, something with your history, and that just makes it all that more exciting. Well, what was the new story? <laughs> the new story that I heard was how the whole Well Foods just uh, kind of came to be with a conversation with your neighbor. Um, I don't know. I personally haven't heard that story before. I don't know if you put that out there on other podcasts. I try to get every one that you're on. I, I actually have not even heard this story. John, well, well that's ironic because our sponsor, Well Food Company, actually graciously provided <laughs> Callie and I with a package of jerky today as I was leaving the house. But sponsor, I mean. I'll have to write that person in there. Yeah, yeah, it's my wife. Um, yeah, the way Well Food Company started was 2009. We launched CrossFit Football, and I started traveling for the seminar. And being a you know, non-gluten, paleo-esque, primal eater, I was really struggling to actually find things to eat on airplanes and in uh, airports. So I found myself stuck in a layover or, or on an airplane for six hours, and you're seeing people like hammer sandwiches and peanuts and drink Cokes, and your like, hands are shaking because you haven't eaten anything in like three hours, and your stomach's like eating itself from the inside. So I asked my wife, I was like, you know, what can we do? So she started making actually our paleo cookies uh, in the kitchen, she was grinding up almonds and adding different things and came up with some really good variations. And then I uh, was going down and buying this um, pretty good organic beef jerky from this place called Celestinos and was mixing with kind of nut and fruit packs and coconut and papaya. And just was buying and just kind of making all these things and then packaging them up. And then when I would leave, I would grab a whole bunch and leave. And at the time, we were living down in this kind of industrial section in Newport, which is actually not a big industrial section. It's only about one street long. And I happened to have a, you know, the place where I was living is this kind of industrial loft. My next door neighbor uh, would, would come by and come over in the afternoons kind of later. He was, uh, he, like I said, he's a fisherman. So he worked for six months and was off for six months. So he, during his off time, he would come over and he would bring over like a, a bottle of bourbon and two glasses and like show up like 4.30 and be like, hey, let's have a drink. So he comes in. We sit down. He's like, you got anything to eat? And I was like, yeah, my, uh, my wife made this stuff. And he's like, oh, my God. These cookies are amazing. This this jerky is amazing. And he was like, you know, uh, I'm in the food business. I didn't really know what he did. And then when he told me he was a fisherman, I thought he like went down to the harbor and went like out in a rowboat and fished. And, I'm in the food business too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in the food consumption business. And then I was like, well, yeah, you know. And then I didn't think anything of it. Then like a couple of weeks later, when he suggested, hey, we should start this company, I'm like, well, you know, you're a fisherman. Like, what do you know about food? He's like. Let me tell you, buddy. He goes, I pack about a million pounds of seafood a day. I'm the largest exporter of seafood outside the United States. And I was like, oh, obviously you know something about food. And that's how Well Food Company started. And started in my my downstairs of my uh, uh, of my loft. And we had a little office down there. And we were actually uh, went out and sourced all this. And that's really how Well Food Company started. There you go. One of the other stories I heard uh, was the first purchase you made with an NFL pick. <laughs> oh, I right? have That one was cool, dude. Not that the well food story isn't cool, but that one just kind of threw me off guard. You know, I, I was thinking like maybe 
a real nice car, you know, Was this when big you house. The, the roller coaster for your backyard? Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> it, it's it's the the big t or, or the big screen the TV, TV store. Yeah, yeah. I uh, when, when I got my first paycheck, I went and I cashed it because I I never had the opportunity to have that much cash in my pocket. I mean, um, in college. I know you guys are going to laugh at this, but our scholarship check was $740 a month. So we got a check for $740. My mom and dad kicked me about $300 a month, so I had about $1,040 to live on. My rent was $475, so I had just shy of $600 to live on. And, I mean, or not, not even that. I mean, yeah, it was it was nothing, which I laugh at now that I only had, you know, shy of $600 to live on. So I'm living off of this. You know, we're going, you know, like my, my whole monthly – food purchase went into this money and we'd go to Costco. I'd buy like frozen chicken breasts, rice and beans and milk and eggs. So that's, ex that's pretty much what I buy. I buy $300 at Costco of all that. And that's what I eat for the month. And when I got to the NFL, um, the, uh, so I, I get my first game check and I go and I'm like looking at this check and I, I it was, you know, it was more than $5,000 and less than 10. And I was so excited. I was like, this is the most money I've ever had. So I went to the bank and, and I, I didn't even have a bank at the, uh, in Philadelphia yet. Cause I was so new there. So I went to the Eagles bank, which was like first union or whatever it was. And I actually cashed the check and I had this like big stack of like hundreds with a rubber band in my pocket. And I was like, you know what? This is fucking awesome. In this Philadelphia. Is in Philly. So this is downtown center city. I come walking out of the bank and I'm standing there on the corner and I'm like looking around, I got this big stack of money and this like white panel van like screams up, you know, I'm like, I go, Burr! and I like, I like kind of look up and the guy's like, Hey man, you need anything? I was like, <laughs> like what? I was like, like, you know, and he's like, I got TVs in the back. And I was like, I need a TV. And he's like, I got them. So the guy like throws open the, the jumps out of the car, throws open the back of this big ass, like a, uh, you know, box van. And the guy has TVs back there. And so I jump back there and I'm looking at these TVs and he has like a 50 inch big screen for, you know, 1999 and 50 inch was like the biggest TV that you could ever imagine. So uh, the guy's like, uh, you know, well, Hey, you know, I'm like, well, dude, you got to deliver it. I live up the street. So the guy follows me in my car and we lift it up and, and like wheel it into my apartment and he sets it up. The problem was like my apartment was pretty small. And where I wanted it was in my bedroom, but it was so close to the bed <laughs> that I couldn't see it, right? Because my, my bed, like, fit the Your whole Your head's, room. like, craning yeah. back. Oh, so, so, so I looked at the guy, and I was like, man, this isn't going to work. And he's like, uh, he's like, dude, what we need to do is lift it up. And I was like, well, what do you got? He's like, hold on. So the dude comes back, like, five minutes later with, like, a stereo box that he'd obviously just gone out and ripped out of some dude's car because there, like, there was, like, blood and still, like, wires hanging off it. So the dude like ripped out a stereo box. He like he's like oh for like you know and then he's like twenty dollars more. I'll 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 give you this box. Cool. Puts the box down. Puts the TV on top of it. Perfectly panoramic view from my bed for me to watch TV. Mm -hmm. So I pay him the cat or I, as I'm paying it, he's like man, you need anything else? I'm like I need a coffee maker. Hold on. Twenty minutes later, it comes back with like a coffee maker that was like stuffed in like a brown paper box, and I was like. Coffee maker it is. So I paid the dude, and I can't remember. It was some like that is the shadiest transaction. The shadiest I've transaction. Ever heard. <laughs> so so I, I pay the dude cash, and uh, he gives me his card, and I always remember his card. It just had like his name on it, with like handwritten. Uh, like no no, it, it was actually printed name. Personal thief. And and then it <laughs> and, and then it had like like three like like a uh, like two printed numbers that were both crossed out with new numbers written and then on the back it said anything you need exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point he crossed and out so, all those, those phones that he that he stole that he yeah. stole so so then the guy was like anything you and I look at him like anything you need he's like anything you need he's like I got you a TV I got you a box to go on the TV and I got you a coffee maker. He like steals someone's business card, crossed out that person's name, <laughs> name and writes it out. <laughs> so then, then the guy left, and that was my first NFL purchase: was a, a big ass TV and, cop and a coffee maker and a stereo box. That is awesome. I, I wonder if that's a unique story. I wonder if that's a common theme across like first NFL paychecks. Well, the you know, the thing which really hadn't dawned on me was that I could have gone to a store and bought it. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
but like I, I was still kind of in that like I'm only have a you know a thousand dollars to my name and I'm like you know I, I had a rule in college that when I went to the ATM I would only take out twenty bucks at a time because if I took out more than twenty then I was going to spend it if I made sure I only took out twenty bucks at a time then I constantly had to go back to the bank and going to the bank was a pain in the ass so like how that's how I budgeted and it's like I mean I I just laugh to think like that's how I lived and like that was the mentality that like the dude on the on the street I mean. You know, when you make a thousand, when you got a thousand bucks a month in your pocket, the dude on the street selling the TV, that is your store. You know, like, I, you know, I, I think I, I had a credit card that had like a three hundred dollar limit, so there was like no way that I was going to be able to go go to a store and, and and physically buy it with a credit card. So then I remember I called my agent. And I was talking to my agent. My agent's like, just get a credit a, card, get an account. Well, that's what he said. He's like, dude, you don't have a credit card. I'm like, ah. Uh, I got like three hundred dollar limit. He's like, hold on. So he, he has his personal banker call me back, and he's like, hey, Mr. Wellborn, we'll send you over the world. We'll overnight you these documents with a new credit card. And next thing I know, I had like a, a credit card with like a twenty five thousand dollar limit. I was like, oh my god. So it it just was such a different mentality. I, I just hadn't really got into that NFL mentality, or or even really even the mentality of a normal person that actually has more than twenty dollars in their pocket. Naive young John. Wilson. So yeah, I was young, twenty two years old, and but you know what? I got a sweet TV. That TV worked, and I was happy about it. So it it definitely uh was was a good purchase, and more importantly, it was a great story, or it is a great story. When you sold it, did you drive it up to somebody in a white van and? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I did. I, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember what I did with the TV. I'm sure I. At, oh, I know. I, I when I went moved down to Florida, uh, I took the TV down there, and I think I ended up just like giving it to my roommate just because, uh, you know, at, like fast forward a couple years, and also you, you guys remember like when like the first flat screens flat screens came out, they weighed like 300 pounds. Oh yeah. And then like two yeah. years later, that same flat screen weighed like 10 pounds, and now they weigh like one pound. So. I think the TV was so heavy, I was like, dude, just take it. I mean, I, you know, so yeah, I think I just gave my roommate the TV or uh, uh, Raphael, who was, who was training with me and actually living in my house so he could uh, keep an eye on it because I was gone for seven months. So I think I just gifted him the TV. He probably still has it to this day. He probably uses it in some weird, like for sled dragging or something. <laughs> nice. So uh, going with the NFL, are you any picks for the games this weekend? I've seen you tweet uh, on Carolina. <laughs> You know, because Ron Rivera, Cal Bear, right? Yeah, and, and you know what? Um, I like uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm totally dropping a ball right now on the, for the quarterback for Carolina. Um, you like Cam Newton? Yeah, you, you know what? I think he's what I kind of like about him is he kind of and, and I, I know some people are probably going to boo me. I'm going to get hate mail from this. He kind of reminds me uh, more of Warren Moon than any of the, the, the other quarterbacks out there right now. Uh, you know, kind of, um, be, you know, like Warren Moon, I, I don't know if you guys remember, like or, he was sure. the original, you know, guy for like the run and shoot. I mean, but, you know, I, I know Warren personally, and Warren's like 6'4", big dude. I mean, could run, but also had a huge gun and didn't mind sitting out in the pocket. And, like, it seems like now if you're like, um, you know, young black quarterback, you got to kind of fit into the, the Michael Vick or the RG3 kind of deal. And I always hated those type of quarterbacks because – you never know where they're going to be. As an offensive lineman, I want to know exactly where my quarterback's going to be. I like a guy like a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or one of those guys that stands in the pocket and just guns the ball because, you know what, if I know where he is, then I can make my adjustments. The problem is when you have a lot of these guys that are going to try to shake it and get out there, you know, you end up kind of giving up sacks and you run into problems. But um, I like Cam Newton. You know, I know he's, he had a lot of bullshit with his dad and, and a lot of that other crazy stuff, but – yeah, I think, it's... I, I think he's turned into a good quarterback, and I, I actually like the way he plays. Um, I also really like the defense uh, for Carolina, and you know, being Ron a Ron Rivera, Rivera yeah, uh, Ron Rivera was our linebackers coach at the Eagles, and also a Cal Bear, so I got a root for him. Uh, for you know, I was sad to see them them get beat, but um, I'll tell you, I'm I'm rooting for Seattle. I really like Seattle. There's a lot of Cal guys on that Seattle team with Marshawn Lynch and Tom Cable, who is my old offensive line coach, is their O-line coach. So I'm rooting for uh, Seattle, even though I am not a uh, you know USC fan. And but uh, I think it'll Russell be Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's cool. Yeah, no, I I like Russell Wilson a lot. I like Marshawn Lynch. I. Uh, uh, I, I like their defense. I mean, they're um, and you know we're not supposed to say this, but some of the 
players that play on the defense of the Seattle Seahawks actually train with a CrossFit football certified coach and somebody we've nice. been working with. Nice. So some of some of the guys that are Pro Bowl players actually work with one of our guys. So you know we, we got to root for them just because those guys are CrossFit footballized and you know power athletes. So I'm rooting for that, and of course I am rooting for Denver. Even though I played for New England, and I just uh, I, I really like Denver. I think uh, Denver's got a great chance, and I, I'm really excited to see the showdown between Brainy and Manning. The only problem is is that people forget that there's another hundred players on that other team that are going to be playing. But the whole thing's going to come down to kind of uh, you know Brady and Manning. I'd like to see Peyton do it. You know Peyton's a good guy, Tom's a good guy, and I both know him personally. And uh, I'm just excited, but I'm going to root for Denver, even though they did play in the. Uh, AFC West, and we used to play against them, and uh, you know, I always hated playing at Mile High Stadium. But um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be some great games. I'm just not that big a Niners fan. I know China Cho is probably screaming about this right now, but I, I, I just have a tough time really getting behind, uh, uh, you know, the Niners. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that um, uh, you know, uh, Jim Jim Harbaugh was a you know was a Stanford guy, and I'm just not really that big a fan of their quarterback. I think he's just guy. He's just I mean, he's a good player. He's just kind of, he's just way too arrogant. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's all the tattoos on a quarterback kind of irks me a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I, I mean, they got a good defense. It's going to be I'm, – I'm more excited for the two games this weekend than I am for the Super Bowl. So. Yeah, right, because it's like the wolf climbing the mountain is always hungrier than a wolf at the top of the mountain. Oh, my God. Right, getting to the Super Bowl. True, Go, Franco. Jenny. Go. True, or sorry, right? Sorry, true, right? No, 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 Franco. But the wolf at the hungry, or at the wolf at the top of the hill, knows where the food is when he wants it. Yeah, but when you want the food, it's there. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore, but I'm Pumping pretty sure iron. I'm gonna, that's my new back tat. All right. Yeah. What, no, you're gonna get a wolf the thing on a mountain. Cam Newton that bothers me, and it bothers me just when I see players do this in general. It, one time he runs in for a touchdown. Here comes the old lineman. To kind of high five him, pushes him off to the side so he can do his fucking Superman thing, you know. And I, I, you know, that's totally from like a fan's perspective. Maybe maybe a player really doesn't care, but I always uh, kind of liked Barry Sanders or Walter Payton, you know. Act like you've been in the end zone before. Hand the ball to the ref. Well, it's you know. a it's a different it, it it's a different NFL than than when you know than what you were relating back to. I mean, yeah. if you look at a lot well, of the rules, and I mean, so. so just look at the evolution of the NFL. The NFL knew to put butts in the seats and to make it an exciting game, you need a high-scoring game. The one thing the NFL does not like is scores like three to six, five, you know, six to nine. They want, you know, right, they want forty-one right. forty, you know, forty-one forty-two. They want big scoring games, and so they they really put a lot of rules in place that have really aided and really kind of hurt the defenses, and have you know really just benefit the passer. So, you know, really these young guys are, you know, think they're on top of the world because, you know what, I mean, that's that's what the NFL is going to. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that arrogance either. I mean, you watch Tom Brady throw a touchdown pass. I mean, the guy gets fired up, but he's like, what is this, like the 9,000th touchdown pass? <laughs> yeah. you, know, you, you, you watch Peyton, who's runs that field better than almost anybody I've ever seen. I mean, Peyton's ability to manage an offense, manage the clock, and – you know, understand the defenses and call the right plays. I mean, to, to actually have a quarterback who calls his own plays, knows the playbook, and the coach just says, hey, roll with it, is it pretty impressive in, in, uh, in, in to today's, uh, you know, NFL. But, you know, he, he's earned that right, and he's, you know, I mean, the, the guy is as smart as anybody out there and has as much experience. And, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited to watch the games this weekend. Cool. I just, just to kind of finish this up, I always wanted to uh, ask you this, so here's my chance. I remember when uh, Michael Strahan won, like, the, the sack the sack leader, right? He got, like, 15 and a half sacks on a play where Brett Favre basically laid down for him. Sure. And if you were on that O-line, and I'm pretty sure it was, like, the last game of the year, everybody knew that Strahan just needed that one sack to, to break the record. And I'm sure, like, the offensive linemen, those guys were like, not in our house, not today. Yeah. And then for your quarterback, who you always hear the old lineman, like, hey, that's my guy. I'll back him up, blah, blah, blah. For him to just lay down like that, 
would that kind of would that bother you or yeah well I mean would the bank account yes. you know the the size of the money that you're getting just kind of like ease up that tension I mean you figure for three hours you're fighting maybe you know maybe it's Ted Washington or whoever you know what I mean you're going up against that guy and then at the you know I, I'm pretty sure it was like the last few minutes of the game for the dude to just lay down and give him that is well, like a slap in all those guys face well, you got to remember too. Most offensive lines have a pretty elaborate fighting system. So, and I'm sure Green Bay had it. We we had it in Kansas City, and we had it in the Eagles. So, if a guy gives up a sack, or an offensive line gives up a sack, I mean, we we had a whole deal it was pretty elaborate with money and fines. So, I mean, those guys definitely took that fine. And on top of it, you never want to be the guy that somebody gets a highlight around, like the guy who you know, like there was. Um, I think it was on Monday Night Football against the Packers. Jared Allen sex, uh, the quarterback, um, through the offensive lineman. And it was this, you know, I kept seeing the replay. But, dude, I was mortified for the poor offensive lineman because he did not know that the quarterback was behind him. And, you know, he ends up giving up a, a sack, and Jared ends up sacking the quarterback around the offensive lineman. I mean, it, it's like one of those things where you're like, I, I don't give a shit how much money you're getting paid. Uh, the NFL – is you know even though people say it's about the money it, and and it is a lot about the money uh, at the end of the day if you're just doing it for money it's really hard to do you have to have pride in who you are and more importantly you have to pride in doing a good job and going out there and kicking ass and yeah somebody just giving up a sack like that no bueno and you know what I, I played against Stray uh, you know as an offensive lineman I mean as, as a right tackle I, I went one on one with him numerous times and as a guard and kind of different stuff and so believe me. When I went to go out and play Strahan, uh, I knew that everybody's eyes were going to be on him. I know every announcer was going to, you know, have a camera on him and, you know, be, you know, talking about Strahan today. And the last thing you want to do is be that guy that gives up Strahan or gives three sacks up on the day to Strahan. And next thing you know, Strahan is, you know, NFC Player of the Week, and because you you fucking suck that day. So, <laughs> you know that that was always the biggest fear because. You know, not only for personal pride, but you also got to remember, you play on a team and offensive lines from the Richie Incognito thing can be extremely aggressive and very, very critical. Uh, you know, the last thing you want to do is come into work and have somebody tape that guy's picture up in your locker because he got NFC Player of the Week, and uh, which, I mean, I, has actually happened. I remember a guy I played against uh, gave up a couple plays to a guy, and that guy ended up being... Uh, NFC player of the week. And so we taped that dude's picture up in his locker and he'd tear it down. Then every day he'd come in, it was taped back up there. Actually, it was taped up every time he ripped it down and he walked away from his locker. And uh, <laughs> that's the last thing you want. You, you don't need those type of pressure. And then you have every uh, uh, you know TV reporter and every uh, sports and beat writer coming in asking you questions about it. And you're like, fuck, I don't want to do this. The, the way that we kind of equated it is... Uh, I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but um, one of the worst jobs you can have in the NFL as an offensive lineman is actually on PAT and field goal, blocking on, on extra points and field goal. The reason being is, as a right guard or right tackle, they put you on the left side, and then you, you, know, you put your inside leg in, and all you do is you step down, and you kind of throw your head and your body into the gap. Well, that gives the defense just uh, a free shot, just a fucking ear hole, you know, try to kill you. And uh, what teams will do, and special teams coaches will watch film, and they'll look for guys that are being lazy. And if a guy's being lazy, they'll overload that gap, and they'll put like three dudes, and they'll put a pusher, which is a linebacker, behind the guys, and he'll push them through, and they'll just blow you up. And so when you go out to do your PAT field goal, if you're not taking it seriously, and some guys fuck it off and they don't take it seriously, but then there's some... You know, special teams coach that's looking for some fatal flaw, and he's like, goes in, and he's like, this guy's not taking it seriously. He's slacking off. We're going to put the push on him, and we're going to blow him up. And they're going to try to block a PAT or a field goal from, you know, you know, with that type of move. So uh, when I was a young guy, uh, Doug Brzezinski and I played PAT when I was in, in uh, Philly, and for some reason, Doug, uh, like, didn't get his foot down one play, and this guy kind of shot to the gap and almost blocked a PAT field goal. Well, we didn't really think anything of it until the next week where they had, like, six dudes lined up on us, and they were doing – and they were pushing on us. They had linebackers pushing. And Doug and I got lit up to the point where, like, we scored and we'd look at each other and be like, motherfucker, we got to do this again? 
and we'd go out there and it just got to the point where we were like, Hey dude, I'm just going to fire out and try to hurt these dudes. I'm going to dive at their knees. I'm going to do whatever I can uh, to make this stop. And, he, and it lasted like three or four weeks. So then every time after I got to go do PAT field goal, I would like fire off the ball and just try to spear somebody as hard as I could in the knees. Cause I, I didn't want that to ever happen again. I used to see young guys fuck it off and that would always happen. Sure enough. If somebody ever gave a PAT, I'd always be like, Oh, Good luck next week. They're gonna fucking. You're gonna be the the guy they're going after. And sure enough, some young guy would just get lit lit up, and it was just kind of one of the deals. But that same mentality you have to take, and you you don't want to be the guy who was blocking Brett Favre or uh, blocking Strahan when Favre went down. And I think the guy was uh, was Tosher. I think it was Mark Tosher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Tosher. Was was playing right tackle when, and I even remember the play because I remember watching on film. Uh, I also remember um, Chad Clifton playing against the Raiders, I think it was the Raiders, when Warren Sapp ended up yep. lighting him up and, and that, hurting him. Uh, that fumble, right? Just yep. blast yep. them because Clifton owned his ass for that whole game. Yep. And then so, Sapp's yeah, I mean, like, here's my chance, yep. and just lit him up. It, like, broke his pelvis because he landed. He, yep. he couldn't catch himself, man. He just freaking landed yep. awkwardly. So mm-hmm. most offensive linemen, like, uh, they'll get hurt on fumble, or not, not fumbles, but it's usually interceptions. So all of a sudden the quarterback will throw like a deep pass and there'll be like an interception and all of a sudden they, they run it back and the defense alignment fucking turn. And you like, it, it's either, so you, you have two choices. Either you just go down, you try to run off the field or you, you know, or you sprint as fast as you can to try to make the tackle. And you have to be as aggressive as you can. Cause if you lollygag at all, you're going to get lit up. Um, I remember when I broke my leg um, in 2002, 2002, I think I broke, it was the year I broke my leg. I remember we were playing, uh, so my leg was broken. I was playing, we were playing against Tampa, and they threw an interception. And uh, one of the defense alignment actually speared me in my broken leg. I was trying to, like, hobble after the dude, and the dude speared me in my broken leg, and I, like, looked at the dude. I'm like, dude, I got a broken leg. He's like, I know. That's why I hit you there. I was like, you motherfucker. But I, I, I had, like, a massive shin guard on, so he hit it. It hurt like a son of a bitch, but he didn't hurt me. But I was always laughing. Like, the dude knew my leg was broken. He sees the shin guard, and the dude spears me in my leg on the on the uh, interception. So it, it's a dirty game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's switch some gears here. Uh, Luke. Luke is he on a plane heading to Ireland? Or no, no. Luke had a uh, a deal to go down and and work with some people down in San Diego. So, but yes, they will be leaving. Yeah. Tomorrow, yes. Yes. So they're yeah they're they're leaving tomorrow. And then uh, I think Friday, Playtech, I think I'm working with one of your guys. I somehow got uh, called up out, you know, from the minors to come in and work with one of your athletes on Friday. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of my boys, uh, we call him the business, Nick. He's a um, place with the Red Sox organization and the minors, and he's coming out to California for a visit. So I think I sent him over to work with Luke, but Luke's not going to be there. So, yeah, give him, give him hell. Yeah, it was funny. I, you know, it, it's rare that I get, you know, I, I, I see them tapping their arm to bring me out of the bullpen, or, or I get called up from the minors. I don't know what it is, but I was like, I'm ready, coach. Thanks for calling me <laughs> in. You, you know, no, normally I wouldn't even get those emails. I'd just show up and be like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, I was working with somebody. It'd be great. Thanks for telling me, <laughs> douchebags. Yeah, this kid's pretty good. He, uh, all of his lifts have gone up. His runs have gone up. His weight has gone up. Um, it's been like a, a crazy transformation. It's amazing when you actually get a baseball player to work hard, how much improvement they make. Because really, baseball isn't a sport; it's just organized grab ass. And <laughs> make sure you let him know that. Oh, I, I will. I, I'm okay. Sure. We we trained a bunch of professional baseball players, and I remember talking to these guys and being like, "I can't believe you guys have never fucking trained before." And they're like, "Oh no, we, we do train." I'm like, "No, dude. I when I was living down in Tampa, uh, a guy lived down the street from me named David Wells." Wellsy was a pitcher for the Yankees. And uh, when I played in Philly, I used to go up and hang out with Wellsy a bunch. But seeing Wellsy uh, play or train was a fucking joke. Those guys would get to the bull, I mean, get to the park a couple hours early. They'd get in the hot tub. They'd stretch. They'd go outside. You know, like, I, I was like, dude, like, you guys have no concept of, of how to train. Yeah, Tex and I were talking about yesterday when I was driving him home. Uh, how what a skill based game it is. Yeah. I mean, the hand eye coordination is sure. so ridiculous. But but if you can like improve someone's athleticism, yeah. it's just improve improve their power. It's like amazing what it does for their game. Well, that that's the thing which always blew me away with uh, a lot of the steroid stuff in baseball. 
that they were like, oh, you know, these players and the steroids and all that. I'm like, there is no drug that you can buy. There's no drug that you can get. There's no steroid that you can get. That makes your reaction time. Like... Well, that can make you hit 100 miles an hour faster. Yeah, or that, yeah. I mean, there, there isn't. Because if there was, uh, I, I would have, you know, like, I would tell you what it is. We would be somehow marketing it and selling it. Everybody would. They would have been. I mean, if, if there was a drug that allowed you to have that hand-eye coordination, that reaction and the ability to use Read your body ball. as a fluid motion to, to hit that ball. Yeah. I mean, where is it? So it's kind of like uh, people always ask me about drugs in the NFL, and I'm like, dude, I, there were no amount of drugs that made a bad player a good player. They just made a bad player a bigger, stronger bad player, and they made a good player just a stronger, bigger, good player. So, um, you know, a lot of this stuff and a lot of these people, I think, the way they justify this stuff is they're like, oh, you know, if you know these guys are all taking drugs, if I had taken those, I could have gone and played. And I've, I've heard that one before. I'm like, dude, uh, go take every drug, and I guarantee you will not even get a sniff. It just is, is the way the world works, man. It's it's such a finely a uh, finite skill. Such a uh, uh, you know, such a few people in the population have that level of hand-eye coordination to be able to do that. I, I just I've never seen it. I mean, the, the, what the baseball guys are able to do absolutely blows my mind. It reminds me about our talks about plastic surgery <laughs> and, like, how it doesn't actually make you that much better looking. It just makes well, you look weirder. We, we had a really um, <laughs> yeah. strange deal here in Newport Beach. I mean, so we have a gal that trains with us who is addicted to plastic surgery. And I'm pretty sure she's not listening to this podcast because she's a – uh, total, total pinhead. She's in surgery right now. Yeah, she's in surgery. She's in surgery, right. Yeah. Well, uh, so with, with, uh, I, she was one of my original clients. So when we first opened the gym, she was one of my brother's neighbors. And, like, she shows up with her mom and, like, this family and, like, walks in. She's like, I want to train. And I was like, okay. Her mom hands me a credit card and, like, looks at me. And I was like, okay. She's like, yeah, she wants to train. Here's a credit card. Didn't ask me the price. Didn't ask me when. Didn't ask for like nothing. Just gave me a credit she card. She wanted personal training. For yeah, yeah, wanted want personal training. So I, I didn't even have a credit card machine. I like wrote down the credit card number, all our information, and I was like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. So I charged her. It was like 150 bucks a session, and every day she'd show up. I, I I didn't know which day she was coming. I just knew she had a slot, and she'd show up like three or four or five days a week. Sometimes she'd show up like seven days a week. And on Sunday she'd knock and she'd be like, I'm here to train. I'm like, uh, okay. So I charged her 150 an hour, and she trained with us for like a long time and then find, and then I remember her mom's car didn't work one day. She either probably got a new card or whatever. And so we ended up putting her into our classes and then I think we were our classes were like $180 a month and I think we were charging her 300 bucks a month because um, she refused to show up on time. So I told her I was like for an extra $120, you can buy a pass that will allow you to show up no later than 10 minutes after the class begins. Because so, she was consistently late every day. She's, by the way, she's not a girl. She's like 40 years old. Yeah, yeah, least. she she's a woman, but she uh, when I first met her, she <laughs> she she was actually uh, you know fairly pretty, and I remember um, she couldn't train for like a couple weeks because she got implants, and then I remember like ever like I wouldn't see her for a couple weeks, and then she'd come back, and I'd yeah. like and I'd look at her, and I'd be like, what the fuck is uh is different, and like every time it just got different and different, and then I I hadn't seen her in like six months, and I was at the gym, and she walked in and came over and talked to me. And I almost was speechless. Like, I couldn't, like, I, I was so, like, uh, like shocked and, like, in dismay, like, looking at her. I was like, what have you done? <laughs> like, her lips and, and, like, her cheeks and all this weird shit she'd done to it. You know, and her boobs are, like, four times bigger than they used to be. I mean, it was just a lot of weird stuff. And uh, I mean, not to get too far off the reservation. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but what, what Callie was saying There's was no that. There's no quick fix. Is that yeah? I mean, it's so hard with the plastic surgery stuff because all of a sudden you change one thing and your body knows symmetry, and people know symmetry when they look at people, and then all of a sudden you do something and it's not symmetrical anymore, and uh, that that really goes back to um, um, the Fibonacci sequence of the face. Yeah. Yeah. So if you you know if you were to slice your face in half, which is really strange because they I actually saw a whole series of deals where they actually cut people's faces in half, not physically but on a computer, and then they They'd uh, take away one side of the face, and then they would. Um, I think it's symmetrical. Well, no, yeah, and then yeah. they would uh, just basically take the other side of your face and turn it over. You know, uh, obviously graft it over and then switch it over so that your face was perfectly symmetrical from side to side. And it was People amazing. Hate that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks totally weird, 
Totally. Uh, and, and it blows people away, and it's because there's this balance. Like, if one eye is bigger, the other one's proportionally, you know, a little bit smaller, and it's like everything kind of fits within this balance. Yeah. And there's no way as a plastic surgeon that you can go in without, like, some serious computer modeling and know that if you add two cc's in this cheek, it's going to throw, you know, it's just such a weird fucking deal. But I don't yeah. want to go too off the reservation. Sorry. On this. <laughs> Danny, no, Kelly. no, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. All right, so what, let's... What uh, else is on... Uh... <sighs> What do you want to talk about? Well, uh, kind of had a serious tragedy tragedy at the OC throwdown over the weekend. Most of the CrossFit yeah. communities heard that. Um, yeah. Kevin Olgar hanging there, buddy. I don't know the man personally, but I have a few relatives who are paralyzed from the waist down. Um, I just I just wanted to know uh, some of the, you know, John and Kelly, your thoughts on, on maybe – you know, is it the nature of the games? So many workouts in no. in such well, a weekend, or in such I, a weekend, in a weekend. Well, I, I think I, we need to establish I, what happened. Yeah, I talked to um, uh, a buddy of ours. Is a uh, floor like uh, provided all the turf, so he works for a company that that makes turf, and he'd actually provided the turf for the OC throwdown, uh, for the uh, sprinting and the running and, and some of the combine stuff, and he actually saw it. What happened was the guy stood up with a snatch and got a little wobbly, stepped back and stepped on a plate and dropped a bar on his head, is what he told me. So, so I, now I, I heard did. a different story. I heard a different story, John. I heard, oh, that, I heard, I heard he, he tripped, he missed the snatch to the back, fell on his butt, and then the bar ricocheted off some stuff that was behind him. Yeah, some plates Fine. were stacked. Oh. I think either way. Either way, it's, it's terrible. It's and negligence. Sucks. It's negligence. No. Yeah. It's negligence. Yeah. Either way, it's negligence, and I believe somebody's going to get their fucking ass. Whoever, whoever was judging that platform, and if you've ever been to the events that we put on, I mean, our biggest priority is safety, and we make it a priority to keep the ditching area completely clear. Yeah. Um, and just because freak things like that can happen, and it's it's so tragic. Yeah, and now this guy is going to have big medical bills. I mean. I don't know. I mean, it's it seems I mean, like it almost uh, seems it almost seems like a loss of common sense. I mean, Cal, you're right. You know, keeping the ditching areas clear. I mean, that's something you do every day in yeah. training. So why aren't people? I mean, I guess you get in the throes of competition and some, but I mean, well, you that, remember, that's something that we train. Yeah. At uh, at the OC Throwdown a couple years ago, they had work up to your one RM back squat in three minutes. What the fuck? Are you serious? Right. Yeah. So I've oh, seen similar workouts right? like. It, it, and it was absolutely fucking crazy. People were like, you know, literally like the guy that's, you know, most squat is 315, goes in there and he just fucking loads up 400 pounds and goes down with it. Like people were ditching bars over their heads. Like it was a complete, like mismatching weight. Like there's well, personally, you know, four I mean, wheels on one side and three on the other. Yeah, so like, I mean, I think like uh, oh, having, a con- having a conversation about like the actual programming, the events, that's a separate thing. Now there's obviously negligence in – um, designing those things appropriately, making them smart, like trying to eliminate the risk of injury but keeping the intensity high. That's that's one conversation, um, and you know we can go into that. But I, I just think, in all honesty, uh, whoever was judging or whoever the head judge is, it's their job to keep the ditching area completely clean. Um, that's such a simple thing, like you said, Steve, and it sh- it should be habitual. It is at our gym, and people know that I'm like such a Nazi about that. And I, you know, this was a uh, a terrible tragedy, but it's a, an example of like how you can't predict uh, when something like that's going to happen, or the bar rick shakes back and hits you in the knee, or something like that. You know, it's just it's just the the risk is not worth the reward. Take the time to clear the station. Yeah, yeah absolutely, it's... and it should be something that I mean, these athletes OC Throwdown is pretty big time, right? So I mean, they had some big names. Big time. Should be something that is almost you know as much as we train our patterns for movement for moving the weights. I mean, those are things you would do in the gym. And then basically what you're doing is it's it's not a freak accident if it's negligence, right? If you're, yeah. if you're crowded and there's plates laying around, right? Yeah. But if you take all those precautions and it still happens, then it's a freak accident. Yeah. Um, so I feel I feel pretty strongly about the fact I, – I feel – I try not to do too many CrossFit competitions because, you know, they do some goofy stuff and you think to yourself – what the heck? Who is who is thinking this up, and how are they going to manage it? And you're talking about the judge or the head judge. I mean, 
I've judged some competitions and ever basically here are the movement standards go out there. There's been almost no quality control on safety associated with judging. And I think you're right. I think one of the judges' responsibilities is not only to make sure that the athlete is effectively moving through the range of motion, counting reps, but also to make sure that there's some level of safety. That he's not doing something stupid like walking over plates. Yeah, I remember um, reviewing the video from one of our Power Athlete Team Series, and uh, you know, Luke put Tex and I on like a phone call together because at the time um, there was one scenario where there was the the ditching area wasn't completely clear. Luckily, the person didn't ditch the weight, but it was a big deal. I mean, we saw the video; it was very obvious. This is in Texas. It was very obvious that we neglected to keep this one particular station clear. And, um, you know, it was a discussion that we needed to have so that that was early enough in the team series where we knew that was just such a top priority because that would completely, first of all, that would ruin the athlete's, you know, career or whatever. Um, and then for us, it's just like, it's, it's just, we can't, we can't have that oversight. And so, yeah, I mean, we, we made a big stink of it, um, just from seeing those videos. And that's also like another benefit of just having the videos that we did because we can, look back and it's just like game footage, you know, we can just see, see where we can improve and uh, how to keep the safety measurements um, and the standards where they need to be. Yeah, and one of the conversations that probably, I mean, the Power Athlete Team Series is, I mean, among being awesome because it's awesome, you have that benefit of you're doing it, you know, month after month. Uh, an event like the OC Throwdown is a one-shot deal, so, you know, uh, maybe something, ha you know, I think uh, Freddie Camacho had a really good post on Facebook about is it time to to think about insurance and those sorts of things, or I mean, even before we think about insurance, just just accountability for if you're going to judge. Unfortunately, the OC throwdown ended badly, and it's a one-shot deal. So are all the other quote-unquote throwdowns going to take heed? I mean, they probably are because they're worried about getting their asses sued. But I mean, it should be more than that. It should be about safety of the athletes, not just not getting sued. Yeah, yeah, definitely keeping the athlete's best interest at heart. Yeah, it's a it's a sh it's a shitty deal, and um, you know, I think that there's like a stay classy up for him to <laughs> provide some funding. Is that is it stay classy? That's uh, funding. Oh, fun fun funding. Oh, okay. Well, either way, uh, there. Yeah, I'm, you know, we can link that up too, so that people can donate. Um, I know that the guy unfortunately did not have insurance. So oh, he did not have insurance. He did not, and that's why they started that. That's kind of why we're. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to go in and do a you know local throw up if um if you know I don't have some at least some health insurance. I mean, that's yeah, that's just not smart. I mean, no nobody goes into anything thinking they're going to get injured, but injuries are reality, especially in competition. And uh, you know now the guy's sitting in there, he's going to have huge medical bills. I can't imagine going in and getting. Uh, you know, spinal, you know, surgery and basically trying to reverse paralysis and not have surgery. I mean, I can only fathom what that bill is going to be. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, what's, hope, you know, hopefully the OC Throwdown had insurance and had, you know, some premiums because, man, I mean, you know, they're going to be floating the bill for that guy. Uh, I mean, you know, and John, you, you said some, you know, you don't ever go into it anticipating injury, but I mean, if we just go back to some initial thoughts by Greg Glassman about CrossFit in general, it's like, CrossFit doesn't injure people, but when you're training intense, there's a risk for injury. When you're walking on the treadmill, the risk is lower. When you're squatting heavy or deadlifting or doing whatever, the risk is there, but the benefit, the risk benefit, uh, cost benefit ratio is something that people have to, you know, uh, take into account for themselves. To not to go into an athletic event of that caliber, um, and not have personal health insurance. Um, yeah, it's irresponsible. Man, gosh. Yeah. No, no, that's. Yeah, that's that's kind of irresponsible. And, I mean, but hey, you know, the guy did it, and now we we you know we got to find a way to help him. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely. Hang in there, Kevin. Yeah, man. Yeah, Best hang in there, bro. All right, so you guys want to get to um, our submission to Power Athlete HQ? Yeah, let's do it. So yeah. Jim G emailed and asked, guys, have a question for the next episode. My upper body, specifically my pressing is significantly behind my lower body. For example, my best bench press now was a 215 from the last CrossFit football total test, but I pulled 500 from two inches below the knees 
on a deadlift, all right, and then I am at a 395-pound squat. Pulling is okay. My one rep max chin-up is 90-plus pounds. Um, I'm following the program as written. I miss Saturdays most weeks. How would you go about getting my pressing stronger without sacrificing too much on my lower body? Uh, you know, this becomes like the riddle of the Sphinx. Uh, without seeing this individual in person, I have no idea. Yeah, did you so, guys see on the blog when he posted this on the blog too? I asked him to send us a video because without seeing I, this, I've seen your response. Yeah, yeah. he's he, he's going to need to come to a seminar or at least come meet with us or or find some people because I'm sure we could. You know, if he came to a seminar, we could probably. Um, evaluate his weaknesses. Uh, I guarantee he probably, you know, technique is a big one. I'm sure he really lacks a lot of tricep strength. Most times I've seen uh, just mechanically a lot of um, people we run into, especially coming out of the CrossFit world, just really don't have a ton of tricep development, a lot of tricep strength. Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, it could be as much as his technique is just horse shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, his back is super strong. I mean, if you got, I mean, a lot of the movements that he, uh, he is very good at are pretty basic primal movements. I mean, hey, let me load a weight up. And I mean, if you can do a 90 pound pull up and your bench well, is. Well, he does note on this that he did it's he's did a chin up, which is very interesting. He needs to be, if he's well, gonna. Uh, dude, as, if, if you can start good. at a dead hang and you can get your chin over the bar, regardless of, 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 of hand position, chin up or pull up, 90 pounds, that's still pretty fucking good. It's good, but so, I'm interested. Uh, maybe his pull up though, maybe his just like well, his ability I mean, to activate the guy, his well, but, but the other thing, too, is maybe the guy is, uh, you know, his, you know, limb ratio is totally off. I mean, it's bottom heavy. Well, think, think about this. Most people that are good pullers are usually uh, longer leg, longer arms. So, yeah, and, and most people big. that are, yeah, most people that are benchers that have longer arms uh, usually struggle a little bit. Yeah. Um, except me for some reason. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got longer legs, shorter torso, longer arms, but I still had over a 500-pound bench. So. The anomaly. Well, but, I mean, I, I also put a lot of work into it, and that's why on the site you see a lot of close grips programmed, because I don't think I did anything farther than one thumb off of the smooth my entire life, because I knew that for a good bench was all about triceps, so I close gripped everything, and that was huge for me, especially my vertical pressing, a lot of my pulling, so I don't know, without seeing him uh, train, I mean, it, it, it might be as easy a fix as... Um, you know, just seeing, you know, some hand position, maybe some balance. I mean, maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a volume issue. Maybe he needs to do more. I mean, I, I don't know without seeing him train and without knowing him or even a video, I, that's just me shooting in the dark and then throw, randomly throwing things out. Yeah, I agree. I got to see him better. So, yeah, what, what's his name, Jim G? Jim, Jim G. G. Jim G. All right, Jim G, send us a video. Power Info at Power Athlete HQ if you're listening to this. And if you're not, um... If you're then, not one of the 10 people listening... Yeah, then go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Classy. Nice. You know, I never I never considered myself having a big bench press until I started getting into CrossFit. Then all of a sudden, I noticed, <laughs> like, I can bench more than the typical CrossFitter. Yeah. Yep. It's the best lift in the world. Well, it was bad. I remember the cert. Uh, I bet everybody... Uh, I, I remember I was like, I'll bet you guys a hundred dollars I can out I, I can bench more than any of you guys deadlift. <laughs> nice. And uh, like, well, what so happened? nice. Did pick you up on that? Or yeah, that's, no, that's not cool. Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure I can bench more than all you guys fucking uh, than any of you guys deadlift. Is that how you like introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I, and I and, like. Hello. Ah. Yeah, you're good. Over there. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. You're there? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I heard, like, a, a, an abrupt, Pause. sharp nose, so I thought, but, yeah, that was, uh, oh, that, was that was pretty funny. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, go ahead. It's just I mean, ego. You know, oh. oh, so English chiming in, but, yeah, we, we were kind of laughing about it, but it's true. I mean, when, when we started this CrossFit thing, not a lot of people had 500-pound deadlifts. Very Almost nobody had a 500-pound squat, but now I wouldn't want to bring that shit up because probably if people out there deadlifting 600 pounds and I'd get fucking crushed. Well, I think what would be cool, uh, they would probably never do it because, you know, the uh, clean and jerk ladder is so much more pleasing to the eye. But if you want to throw a wrench in these game competitors, have a bench press ladder. Mm. I'd see yeah. everybody hit themselves. Yeah. I mean, you, last last year it was the sprinting. That was kind of cool. But, hey, CrossFit HQ, if, you get, if you're listening to this 
awesome podcast. Yeah. Put in a bench press ladder, man. Step they, up they, to the plate. They have a couple of uh, benchmark workouts that have bench press in them, though, right? I mean, uh, yeah. Linda. Linda, what's yeah. Linda? Yeah. Body weight? Body yeah. weight and body reps. I mean, but I mean, it, yeah. Work I'm up to a max. Ladder. I know bench what we'll press call ladder it. That would yeah, be awesome. Well, we'll call that the, Monday night. Well, the, the only problem with having a bench, pass, uh, bench press ladder is uh, you want to see – some scary shit. Watch people try to bench press heavy uh, under duress. Yeah, I do want to see. Yeah, True. so I mean, you know, yeah. Thirty seconds. I don't well, see what could go wrong. Yeah, like you'll you'll have people drop the bar on their throat. I mean, dude, you want to talk about like the wrong place to be? I mean, obviously a snatch is more of a freak accident. I've seen more. But people, you can get out of the way. I've seen more people get injured, uh, strangely, in the bench press. I actually, uh, I was training over at the Globo Gym on my way to work. Uh, two days ago, and I actually, uh, so this was one of the coolest things I've, I've seen in a long time, so I, I walk in the gym, and I'm warming up, and I, I see this kid uh, squatting, and he's got probably like 175 pounds on the bar, um, he had uh, 45s, and then he had like 10s, and then like 5s, and like a couple two and a halfs, and so I knew he was trying to be pretty exact, and of course he had his little journal over there, and I'm looking at him, and he's got like a big, thick, like powerlifting belt with like one prong. He's wearing high top, uh, high top Converse shoes, and he's got a jug of water. And I'm like looking at this kid, and I'm like, you know, it, it just looks so familiar to me. And all of a sudden, I see him get underneath the bar, and he kind of gets a low bar position, thumb over the bar. He gets set up, and you know, feet are probably 30 to 45 degrees out. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh my god, I'm seeing a starting strength area in the wild. Sure enough, I'm like, I'll bet you every dollar I have that this kid's gonna squat five reps. Squats five reps. He gets underneath there, does it again, does it again, three sets of five. And at this point, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I want to go over and talk to the kid and be like, starting strength, right? Because uh, I have this friend named Mark Ripto in Texas, and uh, he looks to be <laughs> He knows similar. a little bit. Yeah, yeah so uh, then sure enough, the kid went over and did bench press. And very nice kid because there was this kind of older gentleman in there. And the kid didn't – I don't know why the kid didn't come up and ask me, but maybe I was intimidating or what, but he asked this older gentleman. He goes, sir. Will you give me a spot on the, on my bench? So the guy goes, yeah, no problem. So sure enough, the kid takes the bar out, brings the bar down, brings the bar down way too high. He's got his hands way too wide. I mean, the guy is benching probably three inches wider than what I bench. So he brings it down and drives it up, gets it up for two sets of five. On the third set, he, he gets stuck on the third rep and somehow grinds it. And the guy's like, come on, come on, come on. All of a sudden, the fourth rep, he gets pinned. So his spotter, the most normal people would what? Help him up with the bar and kind of help him through it. The guy goes down, bends down, spots him from the elbows. Uh, what? Right? So I, I, I swear to God, I swear to God, the guy grabs, like, grabs him at the elbows and pushes his elbows up, at which point the bar actually drives out towards his, you know, fucking lower body, and the kid almost drops the bar on his nuts. What the fuck? And I'm literally, like, watching this, like, like, incomplete. And somehow the kid, like, shoots the bar out because the elbows shoot up and, like, somehow pulls it back and, like, racks it. And the fucking kid almost killed. Like, I, I, I mean, it, it, there wasn't a lot of weight on there. I think it was, like, a, maybe 145 pounds. But strong enough. I mean, the kid was pretty skinny. I mean, it probably would have fucking hurt him. But I, I like, was in amazement. And then the guy, the, the kid was, like, a little nervous. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, you, you know, you almost had it, this, and goes back. And, like, I wanted to go and tell the kid, I'm like, first of all, don't ever ask that guy to fucking spot you again. And, uh, you know, and I, I wanted to talk to him. but And then the kid went over and did some chin-ups and left. And I, I was in the middle of my squat stuff. Um, but it was pretty cool. I actually got to see a starting strength there in the wild. I haven't seen it in a long, long time. So you haven't been to those Globo gyms yeah. much. What's that? you got to go to Globo gyms more. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I, you know, the thing that I appreciated about the kid is that he was starting conservative. He was getting his five reps and was building up. And, like, and you know, serious about it. And, and, he was, yeah, like... and he was serious. He, he wasn't in there just doing all the fuck-all stuff that all the other do, idiots use and, uh, I actually heard my, my other, I, and I don't know if you guys follow my tweets, but I'll tweet things that I hear at the, at the Globo when I go there. The best one I heard uh, yesterday was Lady Walks, or a few younger trainer, probably in her 20s, as a 20-something client. She walks over, and, like, you know, they're both decked out Lululemon from head to toe, and she comes over, and she goes, oh, my God, uh, what are we doing next? And the girl goes, have you ever deadlifted? And the girl goes, uh, no. She goes, don't worry, it's super easy. 
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's so then, awesome. So, so like, I hear this, and I, like, of course, spin around as I'm, like, you know, like, getting, getting ready to do my, my, like, I'm, like, whoa, whoa, I'll, I'll let my set rest a little bit. So I watch this trainer get up. And she she sets up on you know like uh like like the bar was in one of those uh, RDL kind of raised platformy things so you can get extra stretch and like I don't know what the fuck she was doing it was like a weird like kipping dog poop it was like a kipping pooping dog straight legged duck footed deadlift yeah you never heard of that yeah it's it it must be something new that I haven't seen before <laughs> I'm trying to visualize that imagine a, imagine a pooping dog Got straight it. legged okay. deadlift yeah kipping yeah. Stripper deadlift with a kip at yeah. the top. Yeah, but pooping, yeah, strippers don't pooping dog. Oh, it's like, yeah. that's so, so, you, I've been stripping it. way wrong. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kelly just drops it like it's hot. So you, you got to think like straight leg, pooping dog, kipping deadlift. <laughs> and this poor lady, and so then the, the girls like are watching her. I, I, you know what, I, I have videos I've taken there, but it's really hard. Like people think you're like a perv. I'm just like trying to make a video documentary. I'm really crappy. <laughs> so, I'm so, so, so she shows her client. <laughs> then the client tries to mimic her, which, you know, the copy of the copy looks even fucking worse. At which point, one of the other trainers, who's this kind of skinny, um, light skinned black dude who has an incredibly deep voice, like the type of voice where I thought I was going to spin around and see, like, a 400-pound, like, 6 foot eight, four hundred pound Jones. Yeah, like, like some, some of the guys I played with, like, yo, man, what's happening? Like, this dude's deep voice was way deeper than mine. He comes over, and he's like, looks good. See you're training hard. Oh, God. <laughs> I, 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 like, and so I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, looking around, but unfortunately I don't have anybody there that I can, like, look to to be, like, you know, like 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 they can see the horror more importantly with the amazement in my face. So I I'll get on Twitter and I always tweet it at uh, John Meadows, um, just because uh, uh, you know like anything weird I see in the globo, I, I I usually like push out to John Meadows because I realize like he's you know like that's his fucking wheelhouse. And so he he always do this and he he always kind of like will text me back like mother of God. He's like I got to see this place. So. At some point, I'm going to get John Meadows out here to Newport Beach and let him walk you into that place just to uh, see it. But I, I've taken Luke there. Uh, you know, Callie's afraid to go over there. Because... <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. I'll go. Yeah, so we'll go kick in the doors on that place. But it was, uh, yeah, so I saw a starting strength there, and I saw a pooping dog straight leg kipping deadlift, which I thought I'd never seen before. So if that, if that guy, Jim G, uh, Inga wanted to just mention that he – put up some fixes in the archives. So if you just look uh, up Ingo and then you look up fixes or whatever, keyword search, he has some links to some fixes. But ultimately, if you can't see the lifter, you can't see the athlete, we don't know if it's technique or whatever. So Yeah, I, but I would venture to say his triceps are pretty weak. But he's a hell of a puller. I mean, he's got a 90-pound vertical pull and almost a 500-pound deadlift. And a 400-pound squat, I would think his bench should probably be at least 300 pounds. Because I, I remember when I was... 16 or 17, I deadlifted five, squatted four, and I benched three. So that that was always a good kind of mark and kind of strength. Maybe he has some pre-existing injury. Maybe maybe he's got like seven foot arms. Maybe he does. Maybe, maybe when he pulls the bar off the ground, he only has to pull it like three inches because his legs are so short. Yeah. I'm telling or, you, I mean, like I could have written this question. That's I mean I have super life. long arms. That's that's me. That's my life. Like when I deadlift, it doesn't even come above my knees. Booty, I thought you were like six five, and what are you like five nine? I'm 5'10". 5'10"? Yeah. Dude, I, 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 I remember seeing, seeing the video, and I was like, dude, boot, Booty's got to be like at least 6'5". And then you were like, no, I'm 5'10". I was like, man, i got to watch that video again. <laughs> we need a dollar bill for scale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Dude, wait, 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 uh, would you pull like 100 reps on that fucking Tabata deadlift at 315? Uh, 74. That oh. was editing, cinematography. Fuck, oh, dude. bullshit. Uh, I, dude, I, yeah. I was watching. Was dude, I was anything watching the sun in the I background. Did, I did Tabata at 200 kilos, and I got uh, 33 reps. That <laughs> sucked. That anything, fucking sucked. Anything over 50 reps on Tabata, on, on, on Tabata dead list at 315 is pretty fucking savage. I'm still getting a t-shirt or something, right? Yeah, it's in the mail. Yeah, the only problem is uh, we just fucked ourselves t-shirts going again. Nah, that, that's cool. Uh, I got I got a bunch know, of t-shirts for Christmas, so I'm cool. We we might um, I have a design sitting in queue for a, a, a new version. We just have to print them. 
the problem is, you know, whenever I want to do things that are fairly aggressive, Luke gets all mad at me and is like, oh, that's not good. We can't do that. Luke's so, like on the right shoulder of him and I'm on the left shoulder. I'm like, do it. I dare you. Do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Kelly's Cal, like, how about go fuck yourself and I'll kick you in the balls at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> How about you fuck yourself and I'll kick you in the balls as you're fucking yourself. And it's like Jesus kicking someone in the balls. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, while he's dancing on Hitler's grave. (laughs) Oh, classy. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's Kelly Hinsman. That sounds like something off of (laughs) t-shirthell.com. Exactly. (sighs) Nice. Uh, Anything else, Danny, what do we have? Well, we... We were uh, communicating off air about some of the some of our future shows. Um, you want to kind of, and it kind of goes with Jim G a little bit because he's he's asking some questions. Yeah. You know, you guys are saying send in some video. Definitely. Uh, Sooner or later, you're going to be putting out the the membership program where yeah. where we could pay to get some personal coaching, which sounds like maybe this guy could use. Yeah, I mean, um, and we got the CrossFit the Open coming up. So, well, let me, yeah, let, let me just drop it. We've been working diligently on creating a four pay back end. I mean, we we've gotten a ton of emails from people that either want specialized programming, want more nutrition, want more diet, want more information, more assistance work, just more, more, more. And the only way that we know to really kind of do it is either do you know consultations or create some form of paid back end where we can kind of give a more tailored, more specific, more uh, specialized amount of uh, you know information that we give away on the site. You have to remember the CrossFit football site is just one variation, um, and it's actually a, a really just a shell, almost like a, a really basic variation of the power athlete method. So all of the pieces for it, the warm ups, the you know the template, the training, all the kind of extra pieces we usually teach people at the seminar. But you know how do you effectively you know, work with that many people. So we've been really working on creating a you know, video library and just creating more and more content where we can kind of bring people in and have some round table talks. I mean, for example, mm-hmm. we've been working on one, uh, hopefully it'll launch when we have a round table where people that are in the, you know, in the, that members of the site can actually call in or, or get online and actually have live kind of conference chatting with us in a round table, uh, you know, videos, you know, on forums where, you know, you can post your links to your stuff and you can actually get coaching, more specialized programming and just more and more and more. So it's just allowing us to kind of meet the, the demands and the needs of the people that are following the program and the people that are already doing it. Yeah, the, the only thing is, you know, it, it takes a lot of time and effort. We love, we love doing it. We want to supply the information. Uh, we've supplied a lot for free uh, since the site's been up. But, you know, we have to somehow get compensated so that we can for continue to do it. Yeah, yeah it's, a lot more, it's a lot of effort. It, it yeah. is, and, but it's it's quality stuff. Like the stuff that's going to be available is just I'm I'm really really excited to see how it's received. So, so yeah, maybe, um, maybe for yeah. Uh, or go ahead. Yeah, we're we're a couple weeks out um, with uh, Luke traveling this weekend, and then also these guys heading to Columbia. It's just we're we're kind of in a crunch with trying to you know filming everything like last, like yesterday and today. Luke and I were filming all the stuff about you know. You know what is you know like the CrossFit football seminar and just giving people a lot of kind of organic information. So we worked on it this morning and I'll go back tonight at nine and Luke and we'll film all that stuff. It's never ending. It's all day, every day. And then I got to drive him to the airport tomorrow and then I got a meeting for uh, Wade's Army up at the Shot Show. We're doing a uh, event here in Huntington Beach called Badges for Life, which is going to be a big CrossFit event. Uh, on the beach in Huntington Beach, and, and it's basically benefiting the uh, 9-11 Foundation and Wade's Army. So Wade's Army is now a 501c3 a charitable organization. So we got involved with uh, some local firemen and police, and we're going to be co-sponsoring, and one of the, you know, 50% is going to Wade's Army. So we were doing that, and I'm actually heading up to the SHOT Show to go meet with some different people that go to the SHOT Show um, that are going to be, you know, hopefully supporting this thing. So we're out there looking for title sponsors. Uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. It's actually the first time that there's going to be a CrossFit event actually on the beach in Huntington Beach. Uh, the city of Huntington has never allowed it. And then what, what happened with the U.S. Open last year, they really put a kibosh on any type of big events at the beach. And because this is benefiting the Huntington Beach Fire and Police, they're actually going to make an allowance. So it's going to be a super exciting awesome. event and power athletes working with these guys to kind of bring it to market. It's going to come in May. So I'm going up to shot show and going to go meet with a bunch of people and hopefully come back with some, with some title sponsors and hopefully find some people that are willing to, you know, 
support us in the fight against pediatric uh, brain cancer or uh, uh, yeah, pediatric cancer. Man, that yeah. is awesome. And in the, uh, in the coming shows, Jenny, like you were mentioning, we're going to start to cater at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes of conversation towards the Open. I know that a lot of CrossFit footballers out there are going to be doing the Open. I hope that we still have the same spreadsheet uh, that we did last year where you can compare not just to the people, uh, the, the total people doing the Open, but uh, among CrossFit footballers, how do you rank? And so we'll be just addressing – Things like increasing volume and diet and, um, you know, ramping up overhead volume and stuff like that, which I think is going to be pertinent to people like Jim G. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you look at the certain, and, and you, you know, Danny and Steve, you guys know this, to be really successful in CrossFit, there's two things, you know, you definitely, like, that biggest movement pattern it seems like right now in CrossFit is that overhead movement. I mean, whether it's overhead pressing or some form of over, you know, the, the overhead pulling, like in the pull-ups. You almost have to do that on a daily basis. I mean, that's how where CrossFitters are making their money. So, I mean, that's. I can tell you, since we started training for the Open and for our competitions coming up in February, uh, I cannot even believe how much overhead pressing and pulling I've been doing, and it is daily. Um, it's uh, you know, it takes a little while to get used to that volume, but I'm sure, as you guys know, it's a it's a pertinent part of just getting ready. You know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it, for me, it's a weakness, but uh, something about CrossFit really rewards that 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 vertical overhead position, snatch, clean and yeah. jerk, even overhead lunges, overhead squats. I mean, yeah. um, for somebody like me who's old and missed qualifying for Masters by two fucking days, whatever. Not that I'm bitter. Yeah. Um, and bad shoulders from playing hockey my whole life. It's it's brutal on me. Yeah. No. I mean, it, yeah, it lights me up too. I, I just remember doing all the CrossFit stuff. Um, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it just, that, that amount of overhead movement, especially for people that, you know, have been banged up doing other things like hockey or football just fucking lights me up. I mean, I know for me, you know, like, uh, the, the overhead pulling, like a lot of the pull-ups don't get me as much, but like all like the, the just the dynamic overhead pressing, like the push pressing and the, Especially you know. just like, you know, for you, like 135 over and over and over. Yeah. It's just, it's like just bangs fucking, you out. Yeah. Yeah. It's it just, brutal. It just, it's brutal. It, it beats me up, and then I'm laying there in bed, and I can just feel my shoulder ache. So, like, I'll put, like, a pillow underneath my elbow so my shoulder doesn't ache because if it, like, isn't supportive, I'm like, oh, this fucking shoulder is just aching. Are we just – we're just the whiniest group of little bitches ever right now. Well, it's – I'm telling you, you know, something like doing, like, 100 Train overhead presses with, like, 135 pounds. Yeah. That's what I throw up in my mouth. But, yeah. dude, I mean, it's what you got to do to be good at this CrossFit stuff. Um, well, so let's get uh... – you know, for everybody listening to the podcast, that gives you a week to kind of think of some questions, email some questions to uh, Power Athlete Headquarters, prepare yourself for next week's live show, and like Callie said, we'll take like 20 minutes and kind of talk about some strategies for the Open, um, ways Ooh. to kind of tweak your, your current program. Hopefully, you're, you're following the CrossFit football program. And uh, I'm sure you could get some great insight from, or hear some great insight from these guys without them giving away too much, right? Right. Right. Because ultimately, I mean, if you want a tailored program to get you to kick ass for the open, you're going to have to pay for it. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, we, we've worked with a lot of high level athletes. I mean, like China Cho and Zach Forrest and a lot of different people over the years. And, um, you know, we have a pretty good tried and true program that, you know, we don't necessarily put out just because, uh, you know, we already provide so much and we're so busy doing the seminars and a lot of what we're doing. So what will be cool with the new uh, back end is we'll actually have our, you know, games training program and uh, be actually be able to kind of put it out there. So I'm pretty excited. We have about three years of programming of the athletes that we worked with, and I think it's pretty good, and I'm excited to to kind of launch it out there. I mean, I know Playtech and uh, – and, um, Luke are doing uh, a little nine-week program that we wrote that's basically trying to teach these guys how to, you know, deal with that kind of lactic acid and kind of how to really flush it and, and uh, do some really cool things. So, you know, but we're always testing stuff. We're always working to try to, you know, build a better mousetrap. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. All right, so, guys. So that puts us at an hour. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, boom sauce. Great show. Have a good weekend. 
Oh, yeah. Hey, and I just want to thank our sponsor, Well Food Co., and also let you guys know that if you use the code NSAX0114, which is SNACKS0114, you get 15% off for Well Food Co., because we launched some new uh, paleo snacks today and some paleo MREs and uh, some more I cool stuff. I will say, I've tried them, and it's so, not uh, poison. Can, can you repeat that code? Yeah, the, the, the code is SNACKS, N S, oh, sorry, S N A X. 0114. So snacks 0114. Cool. So nice. yeah, 15% off and also uh, $99, uh, over 99 bucks spent free shipping. So uh, you can get some money off and uh, have some more delicious stuff. Sounds awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. See you. Thanks a lot. See you next Bye. week. Bye. All right. Next week. Until next week.